texture of soft goat cheese makes it ideal for spreading on crackers or crumbling over pasta or salads. Goat cheese is also called chev, the French word for goat. Farmers start breeding goats when the animals are a year old. The gestation period lasts five months, meaning milk production begins at the age of about a year and a half. The goats go for a milking every 12 hours or so. The first step is to manually squirt some milk into a cup to check the quality. If it looks good, they wipe the teats with disinfectant to remove surface bacteria. Then they hook up the automated milk extractor. A milking takes just two or three minutes. It typically yields two to three quarts. At the cheese factory, the goat's milk goes into a steam heated pasteurization tank. An agitator stirs the milk nonstop to keep it from cooking. They heat the milk to 66 degrees Celsius, which kills off any bacteria. With the milk now pasteurized, they add bacterial cultures. These kickstart the fermentation. Then they add rennet, diluted in water. Rennet is an extract from calf stomachs. It contains enzymes which curdle milk. With the cultures and rennet in, workers now let the milk ferment for 18 hours. The result, cheese curds in a watery liquid called whey. They ladle out the curds and put them in a cheesecloth bag to strain them. As they lift the bag, the sheer weight of the curds forces out much of the remaining whey. They tie up the bag and let the curd sit for another 18 hours, after which time workers strain them again. The goat cheese is finally ready. They weigh it and mix in just the right proportion of salt, 0.6%, to slow down the aging process. One of the formats this factory produces is 175 gram packages so workers weigh out 175 gram blobs of cheese. Then hand roll each blob into a ball, then flatten each ball into a disc. The disc goes into refrigeration until packaging time. The fridge temperature is three degrees Celsius, just above freezing. Some goat cheeses go for a roll in special flavorings. These are chives. Then it's into cellophane wrap and a plastic container. On the product label, they stamp a best before date. Unopened, goat cheese has a two month shelf life. Once opened, about a week. Another format is log shaped. They roll this particular variety in a five pepper seasoning. Workers also hand roll goat cheese balls. They go into a container with spices, sun-dried tomatoes, and olive oil. Goat cheese is a healthy food. It has twice the protein of cow's milk cream cheese, yet half the fat and cholesterol and one-third fewer calories. iPods may roll in this digital age, but there's nothing quite like a melody that's mechanically generated by a music box. It's why, more than a century after its heyday, the music box still holds a special appeal.
Its musical chimes take us back to another time. A revolving disc, swirling dolls, and luxurious cabinetry. The music box is the original home entertainment system. Today, they make these authentic replicas with computerized tools. They contour a gear for the spring-wound motor and then carve teeth into it. This gear is similar to the type used in clockworks. It's a wind-up device. Next, they coil a 20-foot long strip of steel into a little cast iron barrel. This is called a spring barrel. And it's the device that stores the wound up mechanical energy. Once the clutch is installed, it will be ready to spring into action. This circular blade now sculpts the weights that extend from the base teeth of the musical comb. The weights are called leads and they help produce the low notes. To tune the bass, a technician snips the ends of the leads. She plucks a tooth to produce a note, then measures its pitch with an electronic tuning machine. She adjusts it by clipping off a bit more. This process is critical. It ensures each of the 76 teeth on the musical comb will hit all the right notes. There's a damper for each tooth to quell its vibration. They install these dampers on a rail next to the star wheels, the part that plucks the teeth of the comb to produce notes. The technician aligns the dampers to the star wheels and bolts everything to a cast iron plate called the bed plate. Using a pincers like tool, he checks the tension of the dampers and makes adjustments. Now he secures the upper comb to the bed plate and turns it around to install the lower comb. Music boxes with two combs instead of one have a richer sound. The technician makes more adjustments to the dampers to ensure a proper gap between them and the teeth of the musical comb. He installs the bar that holds down the music disc while it plays. Then he bolts the motor frame to the side of the cabinet, followed by the winding and disc drive gears. He attaches the spring barrel to the gears. Here he installs a speed control mechanism for the winding gears. It's called the governor because it governs the speed. He winds the motor to power it up for a test run and then checks all its parts to confirm the motor operates smoothly. When he's satisfied that it does, it's time to install the musical components, beginning with the soundboard, which amplifies the notes. Next, the bed plate with its double comb assembly is mounted onto the soundboard. He screws support brackets to the box. They'll prop up the musical disc. He checks the setup with the dummy disc. On a real disc, music is printed in the form of perforations. This master disc serves as a template to punch holes in a copper-plated disc below. The punctures form curls in the underside of the disc, and it's these metal curls that will set the music in motion. As the wind-up motor turns the disc, those curls snag the star wheels. The star wheels, in turn, pluck the teeth of the musical comb. 